All right, hello everyone. It is Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. My name is Drew Sukup, and on behalf of BMUG, I'd like to welcome you to today's NVIDIA webcast, Accelerated Medicine, How AI is Transforming Cancer Care in Europe, presented by Craig Rhodes, EMEA Industry Lead for AI, uh, of AI for Healthcare and Life Sciences at NVIDIA, and Jens Kogler, Healthcare Industry Director for EMEA at VMware. Before we begin, I have three quick housekeeping items to go over. First, today's webcast will be recorded and available for you on demand. You'll receive an email with the on-demand link, so keep an eye out for that. Second, a Q&A session will follow today's presentation if we still have time. All questions will need to be entered into the question and answer section on the side, so please feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation, as we love to answer throughout. Try to stump us, I dare you. Third, there will be a short online evaluation that pops up as you exit the webcast, Please take a minute and let us know what you thought of today's session and what you might like to see going forward. All right, let's get started. Jens and Craig, I'll turn it on over to you now. As the world began accelerating to the cloud, a digital foundation was built to power change and redefine the data center turning homes into hubs of innovation and children's bedrooms into high-tech classrooms. Transforming the backbone of commerce and engaging every customer with new experiences. Safeguarding livelihoods and delivering greater peace of mind. Then, AI ushered in a new era, inspiring endless possibilities to help the world face its greatest challenges. Clara. Hello, how may I help you? What procedure am I having today? You are having a bronchoscopy. Supporting our healthcare workers and protecting them from harm. Finding insight in vast expanses of data and deciphering the building blocks of life. Accelerating the way we build while navigating us to a brighter tomorrow. Now we're bringing these two giants of tech together to create the next stage of computing. Optimizing the data center for AI. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for today's webcast on Accelerated Medicine, how AI is transforming cancer care in Europe. I want to start with a quote that kept me thinking as I prepared for today's webcast. You can have data without information, but you cannot have information without data. My name is Jens Kirkler. I'm VMware's Healthcare Industry Director EMEA, and I'm really excited to share some of the work NVIDIA and VMware have done together, and I'm very happy to, sh to have Craig Rhodes from NVIDIA with me today. Craig, welcome, and tell us a bit about your role and your responsibilities. Uh, thanks, Jens, and uh, thank you all. I um, hope you're all doing very well. Uh, so my name is Craig Rhodes. Uh, I lead Health and Life Sciences for NVIDIA. Um, so this is a fantastic role, uh, really starting to look at how artificial intelligence is driving healthcare, uh, driving the pharmaceutical industry with drug discovery, and really driving clinical research. Um, you know, I'm sure you all know NVIDIA fairly well, uh, whether you're gamers, or you've been involved in high performance compute. Um, so NVIDIA and healthcare have been going for around, you know, just over 10 years now, uh, really started in the radiology um, side, uh, but more recently progressed into artificial intelligence, whether that's genomic sequencing, whether that's natural language processing, um, as well as doing some of the big traditional kind of scientific discovery that we do um, in big pharma, in the chemistry kind of space. Um, so it's advancing, as we, we always see with NVIDIA advancing very, very quickly. Um, and we're moving, you know, moving a lot of areas. And we're really kind of focusing in on some of the real tough problems. So great to be here with you, Jens. 
Thank you, Craig. And um, you know what? Let me let me say some words as well. So, at uh, at VMware, um, we believe just like you, Craig, that if if you want to serve your customers in the best possible way, you need to have a good understanding of the industry. You need to understand the challenges and the drivers and reasons why some things can't just be implemented the way they are elsewhere. And I'm part of this industry team, and I'm responsible for the healthcare sector, Femia and support the sales teams in their mission to become a better partner for our healthcare customers. I help to understand the trends and regulations and how to draw the right conclusions for our company and to identify which of our products and solutions can help to address healthcare issues. At VMware, we have three focus areas, agility, outcome, and trust. Or in other words, our customers expect from us the ability to be agile and extending the reach of care anywhere with modern IT. We help them to modernize existing healthcare IT systems through a modern resilient IT in our digital foundations, which we can, which they can rely on. And uh, we support our customers improving care and outcomes, empowering clinicians and patients, all that while protecting healthcare brand and data. Now customers are coming to us and asking us, how do we look to utilize data and especially when it comes to AI. NVIDIA is just a terrific partner for us, Greg, in this space. And you guys have a very strong healthcare team. And Greg, you are actively engaged with lots of healthcare customers around AI projects. So Greg, what trends are you seeing in healthcare right now? And what role will AI and ML play in the future? And what impact will it have on medicine? Um, yeah, well, obviously we're in a pretty challenging world at the moment and um, hopefully uh, starting to see the end of some of those big, big challenges. Um, but even, even with COVID and the remarkable things that the healthcare um, people are doing at the moment, the, you know, one of our biggest challenges is the amount of patients coming in, um, the demands from uh, having multiple conditions, um, you know, will, patients are getting older. Uh, it's, you know, just a challenging kind of place to be um, as far as an industry and managing that industry. Uh, and part of that, like again with COVID and looking at the vaccines, trying to, you know, create new drugs, used to take between 12 and 15 years to create these new drugs, $2 billion um, to create a new one, and the massive failure rate. Um, so this was always the biggest challenge from the pharmaceutical industry, this kind of, you know, failure around this, as well as the length of time to create drugs. Now, obviously, with COVID, we're in a real different world um, that we need to create these vaccines. We have to create the variations in the vaccines as well, because we only see, we're not just seeing one particular type of um, COVID. It's many, many different types. Um, you know, uh, we, we are seeing a reduction in expertise, radiologists, we're seeing reduces in radiologists, nurses, consultants, right across the board. And this causes a, a lot of challenges. Um, when we look at things like data, um, the complex size of the data, whether it's bigger data or more complex, you know, the medical devices, which we'll touch on a bit later, they're producing images of higher and higher quality, things like digital pathology, so we're digitalizing pathology, but these are enormous in images um, that have lots and lots of artifacts on those images. And that requires huge amounts of computation to be able to do that. And you want to be able to do that at speed as well. We've got delays in results, regulation of technology. This is one that I think, again, the world is trying to keep up with AI. And one of the biggest parts of that is around the regulation. How do we ensure that we're regulating this industry to the same standards that we've reg regulated medical devices, um, the same standards of, you know, of using your own personal data you know, when we're developing algorithms? How do we ensure that we're retaining the integrity um, of that data and your personal data? So there's a whole raft of areas looking at regulation, as well as things like complex and procurements, you know, we're working with lots of governments and government agencies. So th there's an awful lot of these challenges that we're seeing in healthcare. And a lot of these now, um, we're looking to artificial intelligence to use, whether it's trying to smooth out the patient workflow so that we can bring more patients in, um, helping to with the kind of decision making process, helping those radiologists decide um, on patients um, better. 
Perfect. Um, there are great, great examples, uh, Greg. And, and I was uh, just about to ask you for the AI and ML space, can you dive a little deeper and give us examples of how NVIDIA is specifically supporting itself to their customers here? Um, so when we look at the machine learning, deep learning, the AI kind of space, one of the uh, there's a couple of revolutions that we're really kind of seeing. Um, medical devices is really, really interesting. And there's a couple of areas in medical devices. And um, firstly, there's our, you know, our kind of big partners like Siemens and GE and Philips, et cetera. And their devices are obviously highly complex, but they're starting to take more and more workloads. Actually, um, they've got GPUs embedded in them to start running algorithms. We're starting to put edge computing close to these big devices so that we can run algorithms so we can start making determinations around a particular image and what might be an artifact of interest within that image. So this idea of kind of instrument to edge to data center, and again, this is where virtualization comes in very, very nicely. This whole kind of, uh, kind of pathway of the device, you know, taking computation, um, the image from the device and then learning from that image and then providing data, valuable data um, to those clinical teams to be able to act on it. So that's one side. The other side is this idea of miniaturization. So we're seeing, you know, smaller and more, smaller and smaller devices, whether they're mo mobile phone type devices or here with the Oxford Nanopore, this is like a flip top um, old phone, but it's actually a flip top sequencer. Um, and this is the size of a small phone that we can now sequence human DNA on. And we can also sequence um, plants, we can sequence animals for welfare reasons. But it's incredible the way that the market's moving. We're running algorithms on these tiny devices. So machine learning and deep learning is really kind of accelerating, um, making these devices much more intelligent, but also being able to take the data from the devices uh, and be able to run algorithms at the edge and run inferencing and then take that data back to the data center to start training. So this, this kind of market is really um, interesting at the moment. Next slide. And then I would say the, and I, I could have chosen a few things here, Jens, but it, it's, you know, for, for our team at NVIDIA working on computation genomics, this is a big team at NVIDIA. It's something we're really, really interested in. It's also something that the healthcare market's been demanding. You know, this idea around precision medicine or targeted therapeutics, whatever you want to call it, we've really relaxed the ability to be able to deal with that and to actually bring that to the point of care because of the length of time to analyze some of these data sets and specifically genomics. It used to take eight hours to analyze a whole genome um, and now at NVIDIA with our latest technology our GPUs but also the software layers Parabricks on top of that we're able to analyze these genomics uh, this genomic data in like 30 minutes and we're going to go under 30 minutes as well and this allows us to start bringing these data sets together the genomics the imaging the clinical data from the clinical systems together to really start understanding, well, what is going on with this patient? What do we need to do? Which clinical pathway do we put this patient on? And, and at the end of it, what therapeutic treatment should we put it on? What type of drugs are gonna act well? What type of drugs are not going to act well to this? So again, it, it's a really, it's an area that because of um, the computation that NVIDIA has been developing, we've really been able to forge ahead and really accelerate this particular area in genomic sequence. And again, looking at Oxford Nanopore and the work that they've been doing in long read sequencing, again, you know, with our partners, um, it's been something that's been remarkable over the last two years. So great piece of work that's gone on. Talking about partners and uh, especially how, you know, you're using the existing data. Uh, one thing my customers often talk about is making better use of the data and information they already have today. Greg, what, what challenges do you see here in relation to the data? And tell us a bit about how such a project works. How can data be selected and prepared in a meaningful way and then brought into a suitable data model? Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's a really good question. And it's always high on the agenda of anybody thinking about doing or working with artificial intelligence is what are you going to do with my data? Um, how are you going to use it? Um, you know, how is the AI system going to 
gain information from it? How are you going to work with that? So um, one of probably one of the leading projects that we've been working on at NVIDIA, again with lots of our partners, is the um, the AI Centre at King's College London. Um, so this is King's College London. It's a, a centre called the AI Centre. It now includes 10 NHS uh, trusts, so 10 very large hospitals. Um, it includes uh, working on clinical pathways, neurology, cardiology and oncology. So looking at cancer, looking at brain and heart. Um, also looking at different clinical pathways as well. So this is taking a number of different areas and looking at the opportunity to help inform those clinical pathways. Um, what's important about this as well is the diversity of the demographics. Again, when looking at data from these programs, we don't want to just find all of the, you know, all of data that looks like the same type of people, same type of patients. We want very, you know, diverse demographics that helps us with bias. Um, so in this example, it started with East and West London. So if we look at the demographics from uh, East London and West, it's very, very diverse. Um, you've also got diversity in wealth as well. So you've got much more kind of poverish areas in East London um, versus West London with places like Kensington and Chelsea. So you also get this kind of mixed as well, which really helps with the data sets as well. And one really interesting and really important point about King's College London is that it's clinically led. So it is not a bunch of technologists that are getting in a room, creating an algorithm, um, it's actually being driven by the clinical team to look at really how how do we inform the clinical pathway? How do we disrupt it in the best possible way? Who, how do we ensure that we're not um, encroaching on the valuable time of the clinical team, but we're improving the situation, we're improving patient flow um, and those kind of things as well. So again, getting the data to those clinicians at the right point in time giving them the ability to look at the data in the best possible way. Again, when we look at the infrastructure underpinning all of this, um, you know, the way that NVIDIA and VMware work together is, is highly important. Talking about the developers, can you, can you talk us through how NVIDIA can support developers? Are you involved in the development of algorithms or data models and what products do you offer to support the developers here? Yeah, it's a, it's a really, again, another good question, Jens. Um, what, what, so one of, the, um, one of the challenges with AI, um, I think, is I think the really sexy area is always about the algorithms and what the algorithms is doing and developing those algorithms. Um, maybe, you know, slightly unsexier area is how do we accelerate those algorithms on the infrastructure? How do we deliver the data? to the right place at the right time with the right capabilities. So NVIDIA spent an awful long time um, developing the technologies to accelerate those algorithms and partnerships with organizations like GSK and the pharmaceutical industry um, really kind of uh, shows how we work with very large industries who are very interested in the data, the algorithms to, um, to that um, are built from that data and then being able to run those algorithms. Now, what NVIDIA wants to do is to ensure that those algorithms run exceptionally fast um, within on, on NVIDIA uh, GPUs. What we have done, though, um, in some instances, and actually in Clara, in our imaging toolkit, we've actually created algorithms as a kind of a, a starter kit um, so that it gets you looking using these algorithms um, very, very quickly and very, very easily so that you can understand how they were developed and engineered and then how you can start to add, on, add your own data onto those algorithms um, and then deploy those um, algorithms, whether they're for research purposes or obviously under the right clinical governance um, under, uh, in, in the point of care. So that idea of algorithm development, again, one of the things we do really well is um, partnering with um, organizations, our startup community. And again, Jens, you'll know this, working with VMware, the startup community in this space is amazing. Um, I think we're probably one of the luckiest verticals. Um, we have such good partners in, whether it's in digital biology, um, or whether it's in point of care in the clinic, or in drug discovery, whatever it is, there are a lot of these partners coming through. 
Um, and what these partners are able to do is to use technology very, very rapidly, very quickly, uh, and get their hands on it. So it's a, it's a really exciting place to be, not only with these big um, customers like GSK and AstraZeneca and Kings, but also with the startup community and helping them accelerate getting their value out of what they're doing as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to probably to kind of, you know, when we look at those types of algorithms um, and the areas that we focus on, you know, one of the great things about GPUs is the broad range of types of workloads that are accelerated. When we think of things like natural language processing, um, interestingly, we've developed our own algorithm by a Megatron um, in, in this space. And these, these algorithms accelerated massively. Um, so this is where these big enterprise um, pharmaceutical companies are very, very interested. But also in the imaging space like radiology and pathology, again, we've accelerated algorithms so that they run very quickly. And of course, in that space, we want to get the data to the point of care really, really quickly. So the quicker we can get it to the point of care, the quicker a clinical or an oncology review board can make a decision about a patient. So to us, it's all about speed and scale. If we can do it, you know, if we can do a lot of data and do it very, very quickly, um, then the value out of that data becomes really, really important. And as part of the way that we've been, um, I think the way that NVIDIA has engineered um, working in healthcare, we, we've really focused on a number of aspects. One is, as we've talked about, the customers and the partners that we've worked with, whether it's in the clinical domain, um, whether it's in the pharmaceutical domain or even the startup domain, um, as well as the types of workloads which are hugely important, the imaging workload, the genomics workloads, natural language workloads. And then kind of the final piece, to, or one of the kind of final pieces in the puzzle is we built this platform, Clara, to really help accelerate getting the value out of, um, out of those customers, out of their data, very, very rapidly and very, very quickly. So we wanted to you know, give them a starter for 10, to show them the way very, very quickly, whether they were looking at genomics with our um, solution Parabricks, or in the natural language processing side, Biomegatron, imaging we've talked about a lot, um, Clara Discovery is a piece of work that's ongoing at the moment, which is looking at the kind of the deep science uh, of drug discovery, which is massively um, complex, computationally very, very heavy. Um, and, you know, you need a lot of deep understanding in the science to really understand what the value that you can bring to this space. And, you know, NVIDIA has invested and is really working in this space massively. And again, this all of this is not done without our partners. And, the way that we work with partners as well, trying to do, you know, we cannot do all of this together as well. So getting those customers, getting the right workloads, getting the partnerships, and then, you know, bringing the software platform that we're bringing across the top of it. Hopefully we're, you know, we're realizing AI um, as fast as we possibly can at NVIDIA with, with VMware as well. Thank you, and talking about that partnership, let me thank you for that partnership and maybe also let us uh, let me take the opportunity for a couple of minutes to talk a bit about the infrastructure side of the of the AI, AI project. So, first of all, what does it mean for a hospital to integrate an AI solution? We actually have to recognize the fact that a typical hospital application landscape already contains hundreds of applications today in a diverse ecosystem. And AI solutions becoming ever more prevalent, the data center needs to be able to support the demand for accelerated compute, networking, and storage. Um, and the users in the hospital, doctors, nurses, caregivers, and support staff, well, they have enough challenges already. Technology should not be one of them. They must be, they just need to be sure that they can trust their IT teams and, and rely on their data center. And so hospitals need a full stack architecture to converge all of the solutions they have to run. The stack needs to be simplified but accelerated in order to deliver resilience and scale. Hospitals need a single platform for both core hospital apps and AI apps and tools. And to, to reduce the complexity, which, we'll take a, which we will talk about in a second. And lastly, solutions that hospitals are deploying must be able to run anywhere. Depending on the 
variety of factors. Hospital applications may run on-premise, in the cloud, or hybrid, and, and, and that may be even flexible. And um, talking to our EMEA customers here and in some regions, you, you feel that there are even regulatories in place which need to be taken into consideration as well, especially when you're dealing with, um, with patient records and data. And IT teams might even then want to look into our Southern Cloud um, concept, for example. Now, many of the participants in uh, the call here today are faced with a very diverse ecosystem, I just uh, which I just described, and which they have to manage secure and which they have to scale up to meet their needs. Next, I think let's look at the application providers. There are there are the company. The, these are uh, the companies that are building the software for the hospitals to run. There are so many different categories, like EMR packs, lab systems, pharmacy systems, and so much more. Each of these companies makes software to be deployed in the hospital data center. All of them have to create a set of hardware and software requirements and do so much handholding to get their solutions deployed. This all costs money and resources, and we feel this is a barrier to healthcare innovation. And we need to enable them together to break through these barriers by providing accelerated compute and network needs on a common delivery platform interoperable with the hospital ecosystem. Now let's let's look then at the data scientists, where they are part of the hospital enterprise, part of a research team of the academic medical center, for example, or part of the vendor developing the software. What they need is they need accelerated compute. And the closer it is to what the rest of the hospital runs their software on, the easier it is for the IT department to support them. And the needs for the different groups do not always go hand in hand, what we figure out. We need to keep in mind that almost half of the AI projects fail before getting into production. And one of the reasons we hear is that existing infrastructure holds them back, especially because they there are often rigid processes and guidelines in place, as well as data security and privacy concerns within the organization. Often developers expect great agility and flexibility so they can quickly test new developments or consume code and services. And in the worst case, this leads to shadow IT, which is completely out of control for the IT team. By the way, we are not just talking about large university hospitals here. I, I personally work with an organization in in Munich here in Germany uh, called Care for Rare that does research on rare diseases for children and they also built their own virtualized AI platform for a research project where they had to make sure that they were using hospital IT standards so that the IT team was ready to take over the administration of the system, which otherwise would not have been possible for the research team members because they simply do not have the skills and, and, and experience how to manage an infrastructure. So what we want to look at is how do we unify the hospital data center and leverage a common infrastructure that supports both the hospital applications today and AI enhanced applications for the future. If we look at the typical hospital data center, we already see a lot of applications already on the VMware stack, apps like the EMR, back office software, like Exchange for Email, DICOM, HL7, you name it. But there is no compute in here. Only CPU is in here and, uh, and, and no GPU. And what forces IT departments to do then is for individual projects to create standalone boxes where we put GPUs inside. And that is expensive, inefficient, and, and doesn't scale. So think of an advanced visualization, things like oncology, where we are doing research and then uh, the rise of the A uh, AI applications. What we want to do is that we take all that together and bring it to a converged stack and accelerate it. All applications can run on a single platform. IT departments manage one stack running on top of NVIDIA certified systems powered by VMware virtualization to make everything work much more converged, AI ready and app centric. So this really comes in three steps. First, we build a platform to run all the apps on the infrastructure, make it scalable, make it resilient. Next is 
to provide a platform for building next generation AI applications. This is a supported set of SDKs to build all the apps on top of it, sort of the last mile of integration. And third is making space available to run all these AI applications which are coming to hospitals today. And NVIDIA itself runs an incubation program called Inception with over 1,400 companies in healthcare alone and in many different fields, but they need a home in the data center and an easier way to get connected to the key applications. So this is where NVIDIA Enterprise comes in. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. NVIDIA certified systems are validated systems from many OEMs that meet criteria for performance, for the GPU, networking, and storage. Next, we have the VMware vSphere with Tensu, which virtualizes the operating system de uh, deployment to support the thousands of apps we see in healthcare today and support also for the dockerized containers. Part of this package includes vGPU, providing the ability to share and scale GPUs across many VMs for resilience. And I think I should mention at this point that VMware vSphere is the only virtualization platform which is certified for NVIDIA AI Enterprise, which is the next stack here, and a set of services that has been pre-accelerated and validated to run on NVIDIA certified systems. It includes frameworks and services like uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and others. And lastly, sitting on top of this robust platform is all of the clinical and back office applications that drive the hospital business. And uh, frameworks like Clara Imaging, um, what uh, you mentioned before, Craig and Monet and Clara Guardian help drive healthcare specific workloads at the AI enterprise um, level. And to be able to run that stack, which is really time to value what I think uh, that, that yellow um, and green stack from NVIDIA here, or time to insights actually. It has been certified to run on, uh, on vSphere, starting with vSphere 7 update 2. Customers can deploy an end-to-end -end certified AI solution that they know will work and can be folded into existing enterprise infrastructure. And it's optimized for performance to run AI workloads at nearly bare metal performance with new optimization for GPU acceleration on vSphere, including support for the latest Empire uh, architecture. Additionally, technologies like GPU direct communications are now supported on vSphere. Scale out to multiple nodes is also supported to enable even the largest deep learning training models to run on vSphere. NVIDIA Enterprise support is part of the software suite so that enterprises can ensure that their mission critical AI projects stay on track with access to the NVIDIA experts here. And uh, finally, just to double click on the performance, as this is impressive. Thanks to the phenomenal work by NVIDIA and VMware, we can deliver bare metal performance for AI solutions in the virtual world. On this chart, if you look at the impact of virtualization where gray is bare metal and green is virtualized, the impact is minuscule, barely just a percentage point. And with that tiny performance impact, the IT department gets a robust deployment and support experience with resiliency, fault tolerance, and scalability to manage all of their healthcare. This makes it also possible that we and the hospital IT team can perfectly partner with the research team and departments where these projects are usually located and leverage existing skills and experiences to prevent shadow IT and security issues as these projects often run in specialized departments like radiology, as you mentioned before, without a deep knowledge of infrastructure management. And in summary, this means we are able to provide IT and research teams with the right performance, manageability, security and scalability to run their AI projects, VMs and containers on the same platform. Greg, what would you like to add to that? Do you have any other examples or areas you would like to talk about? <clears throat> um, I think the virtualization thing is, is, is really, really interesting. And we've, um, there's a great example in the Netherlands, Albert Cancer Hospital, and um, that's completely virtualized. Um, their infrastructure for artificial intelligence, trying to maximize um, the value that they're getting out of their infrastructure and being able to deliver it to the people that need to use it as well. Um, and I think that's a fantastic example. We've got other examples around um, areas like imaging as well, where you know they're trying to use 
organize, they want to use the maximum um, value out of the HPC cluster and deliver the same um, uh, AI capabilities um, down to the desktops of lots and lots of scientists. So th there's some really, really great user cases here with NVIDIA VMware. Um, actually, one of the really interesting areas, um, and this is not just around virtualization or technology, but this comes back to um, Jens, your point uh, around using data. So one of the biggest challenges always with using um, data in healthcare is the, um, the governance, uh, the security of that data. And being able to use it, you know, we can, you know, we can jump through those hoops, but it takes an awful long time to, um, to do that. Now, there's this, um, it's been going a few years now, but this concept around uh, called federated learning. Um, and this is a really, really interesting um, kind of methodology. This is where we start to build algorithms um, within the, each hospital uh, and we train um, the algorithm. So as an example, at the Kings, um, you know, we've got 10 hospitals all working on uh, cancer, particularly say breast, can breast cancer. They're all building algorithms. Now, rather than sending the data back to a central uh, data lake, um, rather than them doing that in each hospital having to send their data, actually what we're doing is we are actually creating the algorithms in each of the hospitals and then we move the algorithms. So those algorithms are then centrally um, stored and uh, consolidated and we create this uh, kind of super algorithm, this super model um, that then is delivered back into the hospital. So what's really, really important here is the network, the network traffic, um, the algorithms coming backwards and forward, the versions and the variants of those algorithms uh, and so on. So it's a, it's a great, it's, it's a really great new methodology that because of artificial intelligence, we've really got to take um, the security of data really important. We don't want to be working in a black box type environment. We don't want to just create these nice AI tools, but nobody understands how, how we're delivering the results. We, we need it to be open. Um, but, and as part of that, we need to ensure we comply to the governance of that data. So federated learning is a great example of the way, way that it works. So just a, a new kind of um, area that's really starting to take hold on some of the imaging programs, um, but we're starting to see some um, kind of thoughts and ideas in genomics and um, the pharmaceutical organizations are starting to adopt federated learning as well. Um, where they can't access their own data because some of the data is in China or elsewhere in the world that they can get hold of. Um, and just, I think probably before the, the kind of last slide from N NVIDIA, just to talk about, you know, one of the things we're really trying to end with NVIDIA is to bring, bring all of these different worlds together, whether it's the devices, um, it, we're trying to bring tools and solutions together with that, um, with our partners as well but the final slide from um, Cambridge one which I think is worth so and you know to add on a you know a really kind of you know a positive note but also you know it's amazing what our CEO does sometimes and um, it's amazing and also very challenging um, but uh, probably a year ago now um, we we got uh, told that we were going to uh, deploy the largest supercomputer in the UK uh, for health research um, and in June we actually uh, delivered it uh, with our founding partners AstraZeneca, GSK, Kings, the NHS and Oxford Nanopore. Oxford Nanopore are an um, amazing sequencing company from Oxford doing long read sequencing and this idea of this supercomputer um, is to really accelerate drug discovery, accelerate clinical practice, accelerate genomic sequencing it really, you know, Jensen really wanted it to be um, something to forge ahead in cancer discovery and also in COVID. Um, it was, you know, it, we're in the middle of COVID. So what can NVIDIA do with their partners to help in this space? So um, we built the largest supercomputer and now we're running some amazing workloads. We've just finished running a, a workload with Kings and the NHS around um, brain so we're able to create brain images and we started to look at questions around, you know, Alzheimer's and predicting Alzheimer's. Um, so to do some fundamental things that just wouldn't be possible without um, a supercomputer like Cambridge One. 
So we're doing this to drive the health research market. We're doing this to show organizations that supercomputing um, is, is really the way to go when we're looking at large scale healthcare problems and challenges. You need the right computation, you need the right infrastructure, um, but also you need the right partners and people alongside you to be able to do, achieve that as well. So it's a, it's a great piece um, of work that we've been working on um, and a lot of results are going to come out of this. Um, we've got our GTC conference as well, which I think we'll show in a minute. But there's a lot of talks coming up as well um, that NVIDIA has done um, around Cambridge. But, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. And you know what? Let me share another great <laughs> example, even one where we were involved in together. And I would like to roll that video in a second, uh, just before we are going to start the Q&A part. So whoever is on the line right now, please stay tuned for Q&A is part in just about a second. For us as medical staff, the introduction of the electronic health record was really a game changer. It literally saves patients' life to have access to their information everywhere at any time. At University Hospital Essen, we know firsthand what impact digitalization and technology has on medical care. In the emergency departments, in the ICUs, in the operation theaters, we rely on it every day to save lives. Our hospital is one of the most renowned smart hospitals in Germany. More than 300,000 patients a year benefit from our pioneering approach. Our ambition is medical care with four main goals. The first and most important is best patient treatment. The second is best patient satisfaction. The third is best staff satisfaction. And fourth, it has to happen at socially acceptable costs. To realize this vision, for me, digital transformation is really the key. We need to give our medical staff access to all the applications, all data, at their fingertips, at any time, everywhere. That's why we started the cooperation with VMware in 2007. With VMware Workspace ONE, we wanted to deliver a flexible but secure workspace for our employees. Today, nearly all critical information systems run virtually on VMware servers. This ensures that they are always up and running and that there are no interruptions in patient care. As a smart hospital, we want to use digitalization in a particularly smart way. With the usage of the VMware tools, we not only want to provide a robust platform, but also to develop our own apps. Whenever an application is needed to optimize workflows or patients' care, we use VMware Cloud Foundation with Tanzu Kubernetes. Thanks to this solution, we have already deployed dozens of applications quickly and efficiently. One example is our own in-house developed customizable patient dashboard. This allows doctors in the hospital to access patient information instantaneously across all systems or take our self-developed deep learning based application Bone Age. This allows us in milliseconds to analyze an x-ray of the patient's hand for the age of the bones. Leveraging the VMware platform is fundamental to us. We want to be the best partner for our patients. We want to reinforce our leading position as a smart hospital. And we use this platform to gain the lead, to keep the lead. The physicians, the nurses, you name it, they are the heart of the hospital and the IT is the nervous system. I think we are on an exciting journey together with VMware to push the boundaries of medical care. Well, that is exciting work, um, Greg. Until we wait for the first questions to come in, um, you want to spend a minute talking about the NVIDIA GTC event? Uh, yeah, so GTC is um, obviously NVIDIA's great big um, artificial intelligence uh, conference. Uh, one of the great things about GTC is it's got such a great um, vertical presence. So healthcare is always really, really well represented. You know, usually we have uh, between 15 and 20 talks um, this year. Uh, well, so this time round, it's the kind of US 
um, kind of focus, but we still have talks from AstraZeneca, GSK, and so on. Um, so it's it's fantastic. So we we hear from areas like drug discovery, genomics, medical imaging, smart hospitals. You know, there's literally hundreds, if not thousands, uh, of, of talks. So it's it's really good. We have the startup community as well. So if you're really interested in the startup community, we have those um, present as well. So um, you know, it's free as well. So it's one of those uh, great conferences that are free. Uh, and you could literally spend your whole week uh, watching these. And actually, we had teams, I think it was from GSK, that we had a team of 30 that spent that whole week just watching uh, GTC every day. So they blocked out their calendars. So there was enough content uh, for a team at GTC. Yeah, so it, it, it's great. Um, unfortunately, uh, still not face-to-face -face yet, but it's all online. Uh, the other great thing as well, um, if, you, if you're kind of first to GTC, We've done everything we've uh, done before on GTC online. You can go back towards as well. So we've, like, we've got great talks from people like Bayer talking about federated learning. So they're all free to go and access um, as well. So, uh, you know, Jen, the, the, you know, the amount of AI content out there in, on the web through GTC and all of our kind of talks is um, absolutely amazing. But uh, yeah, for the latest and greatest, go and uh, sign up to this GTC. VMware are also presenting with NVIDIA as well, so that should be fantastic. Yeah, we we'll are looking forward to that. Greg, we, we put uh, the link to register in the, in the chat field so people can register and we have the first questions coming up. And uh, let me ask you the first one. Um, here's a question. How will the Cambridge One supercomputer change healthcare computing in the UK? Can you talk to that? Yeah, I, th I think it, it, it's not just the UK. Let's be clear about that. The, the, the rationale about why why did we put it in the UK? Um, you know, if you look at the engagements we had from the pharmaceutical community with GSK and AstraZeneca, with the NHS, the clinical community through the NHS and Oxford Nanopore from sequencing, it, it was just made absolute sense. We had such great partnerships with those. Um, we are going to show the scientific and clinical community what the art of the possible is with some of the data that we've got available to us and some of the problems that we've got. These are kind of, in some cases, life-changing things that we are developing. And it's, again, this is not NVIDIA developing these. We're doing this with customers. We're doing this with the NHS from a clinical perspective. We're doing this with GSK and AstraZeneca from the drug discovery pharmaceutical. So they're coming up with some pretty tough challenges for us. And what we're showing is how scaling infrastructure and making infrastructure available to the right people in the right way, you can achieve remarkable things. Um, and as I said previously, the work that we've done with King's College and the, um, the NHS around brain imaging this should be able to inform how we look at um, neurology, how we look at stroke, how we look at Alzheimer's. Um, and those models are going to be freely available as well. So one of the things around Cambridge One is being able to put back into the community and the open source community, community some of these algorithms that we've developed. And those algorithms will be able to be um, used by people around the world as well. So, yeah, it's a, it's a remarkable um, opportunity for NVIDIA and our partners as well. I know we've done the same thing with Earth 2 as well, so this is going to be a, an environmental one, but um, for my own heart, the Cambridge one is just going to be incredible. Thank you, Greg. And um, for anyone who is uh, on, on the line right now, just um, as, an, as an information, we have blocked a few, um, a, a few slots directly after that event. So if you have individual questions if you want to discuss with us individually uh, about you know your future project or what are you what you're planning on and where you might uh, need help um, just reach out to the team in the chat and we will get you into one of these slots directly after that call or reach out any time later Greg there is a second question for you and I think um, you might want to talk to that as well and that is do you think that accelerated computing can help resolve the diagnosis issues caused by the COVID pandemic yeah, well, it always it has done, and it has been doing that over the last couple of years. And um, uh, actually, some work, and it was uh, you know it was when Italy 
um, were going through quite an extreme time. They, you know, it was the first real country that we saw in in kind of Europe that the rate of the uh, COVID was extreme. Um, actually, at the time we developed, uh, you know, you talked about a hybrid solution, Jens. It was mm. a hybrid solution where obviously the data is sitting um, on premise, the radiology images of the chest X-ray. Um, but then we were um, loading up the artifacts from those images to a cloud-based solution um, to be able to determine, you know, is this influenza, is this um, just, you know, water on the lungs, or is this particular COVID? So we did, we started to develop that solution that was deployed in um, in Milan in a big hospital there to support um, the pandemic there. We've worked again, you know, call out Oxford Nanopore. Um, around there, what they uh, they've got a model called Lampor um, for um, determining uh, COVID pathogens, um, and we've been helping them to accelerate. So Oxford Nanopore's long read sequencing is predominantly used. About ten percent around the world um, use Oxford Nanopore's Lampor sequencing. So you know we want to be able to run tests um, very quickly, sequence tests very very quickly. But also what's been great with Oxford Nanopore is looking at the variants. So what variant a patient is, how that variant splits and diverges and so on. So that's in the kind of sequencing world. And then if we take the drug discovery world, you know, GSK and uh, sorry, AstraZeneca have obviously been a, a for ahead of the game with all of this, but Pfizer, um, BioNTech recently announced a partnership with InstaDeep for a COVID um, alert system. All of those organizations are using GPUs for drug discovery, so GPUs um, in this kind of space. So across the board, um, you know, NVIDIA has been supporting, again, with partners in VMware, you know, look at the work with Essen. Um, that's been such a fantastic collaboration, um, working together on a smart hospital. So, you know, I don't think it, it, it's hard not to help with the COVID situation at the moment. Um, I think sometimes we just wish we could do more. Greg, uh, one last question from my side, honestly, is um, if if people are getting interested now, what is our recommendation? Um, and uh, for the rest of the group here, uh, for all the attendees, we are going to send out the complete deck with a number of uh, resources. But I, I know that VMware and, uh, and, and NVIDIA together, we are offering something like, you know, um, getting getting started workshops. Um, looking at the data center, uh, at, at, at the AI model C you're working on. So, so Craig, from, from your side, what, what would you suggest? How to, you know, how to get in contact with, with NVIDIA and VMware here? Yeah, I, I, I always think um, picking up the phone or dropping an email to Jens or Craig is always a good start on these, um, these kind of things. And, um, you know, if you're working with hospitals or you're a partner with hospitals, you know, I think going and asking the questions to them, there, there are there are a lot of organizations now embarking on AI. Um, and you as partners or customers, you may not know that or understand that. So going and asking those questions to um, those people, if you know the IT team in a hospital, go and, go and speak to them. Uh, you can talk to them about, you know, if you work, work for a VMware, you can talk to them about the relationship with NVIDIA. So, I, I think, you know, AI in healthcare is is really here. You know, when I joined NVIDIA four and a half years ago, you know, there was not, it, it was pretty hard to go and find an organization really, really forging ahead in clinical AI. Now, there's a lot of it. You've seen the example from Essen in Germany. There's a lot of activity in Germany. There's a lot of activity in the Nordics, in the UK, in France, in the Middle East. So, you know, so go ask the question. Again, come to GTC. That's a fantastic way to understand what's going on um, in healthcare. What is the latest advancements um, that's going on in healthcare? Um, so I, I, there's so many resources um, as well available to you. But I, I just think you know VMware and Nvidia are a really good starting point to come and ask the questions. Thank you. Perfect. With that. Um, um, we have right now we have the contact uh, details on on the website on 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 the on the slide here so people can just reach out to us and and, and we will get you guys connected. Uh, as a reminder again, if you want to talk to us directly after this call, 
reach out uh, via the uh, the chat window um, and we will get you a slot reserved and send you the details to connect um, otherwise I'll, I'll hand it back to uh, I'll hand it back to our organizer here um, and thanks for thanks for a great uh, exchange uh, Greg and thanks for a great partnership you're welcome yeah wonderful to meet you everybody thank you Jens Craig that was fantastic and I would like to know I, I would like to note that Christian Murthy just sent in not much of a question but more of a comment saying it was good to know about the AI supercomputer and honestly I don't great for me to know about the AI supercomputer. So thank you both for uh, sharing your expertise and letting us, letting us know about that. I do want to re-up to the audience. I've never, uh, I've never seen this in webcast before. It's very exciting. If you would like to speak with Jens and Craig immediately after this webinar, so within the next couple of minutes, you can send in your email address in the Q&A, which will be kept private. Don't worry, we, won't, we aren't going to share it. Um, but you can send it over your email address and we have four 15 minute slots immediately available for you. So make sure you send them in. Uh, while we wait for any last minute questions or any last minute uh, email sent in, I did wanna let our audience know that we have two more days of webcasts within this week. Uh, tomorrow, January 26th at 12 p.m. Central Time, we have a VMware webcast called Managing Your Data Center Carbon Footprint. And then on the 27th, at 12 p.m. Central Time, we have a will your DR solution fail over or are you crossing your fingers OVH Cloud US webcast. So make sure you check that out. With that said, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And lastly, just some last minute closing announcements. As a reminder to our audience, you will receive a follow up email with the on demand link from today's webcast. To find out more about the VMUG webcast program, visit vmug.com and check out the webcast page. Please make sure to complete the short online evaluation that pops up as I end this webcast and let us know how today's session went. And from all of us here at VMUG, thank you and have a great rest of your day.